the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. This morning as we read about how they called Christ for doing good works, Beelzebub. How they called Christ Beelzebub. And they're calling him a demon, basically. And the Lord said, how can Satan cast out Satan? Because he had cast out demons. And if a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but has an end. And we're talking about this concept of casting out Satan. And it seems as though nowadays, Satan is working actively in every home, in countries. He's working in the church full time that you could see even the church... I hate to say, I don't want to say it's being filled with demons, but it's being attacked by demons. And the Lord at the end of the parable says this, Here are my, brother, my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. Whoever does the will of God. It's almost becoming rare. It's becoming rare to find a group of Christians that live according to the will of God. We hear a rumor, we take the rumor, and we spread the rumor, and the rumor becomes this big. And everybody somehow seems to know everything about everything in every situation. And we have like the demon coming in, the demon of division, and the demon of rumors, and the demon of gossip, and the demon of causing shame, and the demon of making people feel attacked or hated. You see... What happened? Christ is saying, For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. We just celebrated the feast of St. Mary, which is why the church gave us this reading to say, Whoever does the will of God is my, is my family, is my mother. And you see here, I want to talk about actually a blessed saint, St. Macarius. St. Macarius is one of the greatest saints. There's three Macariuses, and we call him St. Macarius the Great, St. Macarius the Egyptian, Abu Mu'ar. He's the founder of the monastery that we find in the desert of Shahid in Wadi Natru. And I want to tell you a few stories so we can understand what is the way that we cast out demons. St. Macarius was a young righteous man that they came, a village came, and they took him and they forced him and ordained him as a priest. And he lived on the outside of the, the city and, and everybody knew that he was a blessed man. And one day, a young woman in a city made a sin and ended up getting pregnant. And they came and they came and said, what happened? Who did this? And they said, she said, it was the monk outside of the city. He's the one that got me pregnant. And all the men of the city rose up and they grabbed St. Macarius and they beat him and they whipped him and they brought him almost to death. And the family said, unless he can provide, like we'll keep him alive only if he can provide for the young woman. And St. Macarius, even though he was innocent, he said, oh Macarius, now you have a woman and a child to provide for. You need to get to work. St. Macarius, you're innocent. You're pure, you're holy, and people are cursing you. And they beat you falsely, and they did this. And he didn't even open his mouth. And you'll understand why. So he began to get the palm leaves and weave baskets and make baskets. And you know, back in the old days, the monks used to do this. They used to keep themselves busy with work because they never allowed themselves to be idle. But it wasn't work that kept their minds busy. It was a mechanical work that kept them able to focus their minds always on God in worship and in prayer and meditating on Christ. So 
he's weaving. If you ever see like a, a woman who, who sews or she knits, she can just do it without even looking. And she's doing it mindlessly. And so St. Macarius begins this work. And I want to remind us of this type of work because there's a lesson in it. There's a lesson in not being idle. Not staying around doing nothing. And also not always allowing our minds to be working. But people always tell me, Abuna, I say my prayers, I read my Bible, I do my things, but I find my mind is longing for sin. I'm running after temptation. We can't do it as an equation. I do my prayers, I read my Bible, I do my Agbeya, I do my Matanyas, and that's it, I'll never have temptation. But the mind that is focused on God and seeking God, and this is something that we can do in today's day and age. Women, as we're, or women or men, as we're cutting onions and we're shedding tears. When was the last time we shed tears for our sins? You know, the church fathers talk about crying as, as a gift. The, the, the tears is a gift. It's a spiritual gift. And I say, I can't even cry for my sins. That at least when I'm cutting onions and tears are falling, let me remember my sins. Let me remember my sins so that I can always, at all times, my mind can be directed towards pursuing God. Because otherwise the devil begins to do exactly what we heard in the story. Creates, the devil comes in and he takes over a man's house and he does all these things. So how can we dedicate our minds completely on God? When you drop something and you go to pick it up the floor, it's like a matanya. It's a time where I come and I remember that I need to be lowly. I need to put my face to the floor. How can we as the people of God take the lessons of the monks who are doing this mechanical work because they want to direct their minds towards God? You know, if you ever go to a monk, to, to, to a monastery, you see monks, they carry these prayer ropes and they have beads. They're like a sabha. And you have a monk, he's just going around counting beads, but he's not counting. Because the Bible tells us to pray unceasingly. He's not just counting. What is he doing? He's keeping his mind focused always on prayer, and he gets in this routine, and he's doing whatever he can that his mind would be consumed with God. I'm asking you, do you know why you fall in the sin of gossip? And the sin of judging. And the sin of, of spreading a rumor. If our minds were with God. And our minds were focused on being aware of ourselves. We would be so cautious. We would be so cautious. So let us learn the first lesson of St. Macarius. So he begins to work. And he's providing for probably seven, eight months as, as, as this woman is pregnant. And she comes to deliver the baby. And she's in deep pain in labor, and the baby is not coming out. And she was in labor for so long, and she was dying, almost to the point of death. And they said, what did you do wrong? Something must have happened that you have done, that you are not, a you are not able to deliver. And she said, I lied about the saint, St. Saint Macarius, or the, the monk, who I said committed sin with me. It wasn't him, and she began to confess. And... The rumor got to the disciple and said, Blessed are you, Macarius. You're free. You can go now. And he says, No, let me run to the desert. What are we talking about? Everyone is going to see that you're innocent and you've been falsely accused. He says, No, let me go to the desert. He said, Why? He says, <clears throat> It is safe. It is safe for me to be accused and to be rebuked and to be cursed. But to be praised with honor is dangerous for my salvation. Because everyone is going to come and say, St. Macarius, you are the greatest saint. Even they know that he didn't even defend himself. Do you see how somebody comes and says, I want to be with God at any cost. At any cost, I want to be with God. And so they're coming to praise him. He says, let me run away from praise. Another young disciple came to St. Macarius and said, St. Macarius, I feel like somebody cursed me and I was so upset. He says, okay, I want you to go 
and go to a cemetery and begin to rebuke the dead, curse at the dead bodies that are in the cemetery. And he went and he began to curse them and then he came back and he says, tell me what did they say? He said, they didn't respond. He says, okay, I want you to go back and I want you to praise the dead and tell them how saintly they are and how great they are and come back. And he went and he praised the dead and he came back and he said, he said, what happened when you did that? He says, nothing. He says, so you must also be like this if you want to be saved. You know, sometimes when I deal with marital problems and people who are fighting, and she disrespected me and my honor and my this. Imagine. Imagine that we are holding on to our honor so much to the point where I'm willing to leave my marriage, to hurt my children, to do something because of my honor. And St. Macarius is telling us a great lesson that we need to learn from the saints. <clears throat> If somebody praises you, get to a point where it has no effect on you. And if somebody curses you, <clears throat> get to a point where it has no effect on you. That you're self-aware. You know yourself. If you're a sinner, okay, I'm a sinner. I deserve these harsh words. Another thing that you learn from St. Macarius as he was praying one day in his cell, he heard a voice in his head that says, go into the inner wilderness. And he says, no, I won't go lest this be a trick from the devil. And he began to pray and fast for this thought that kept on coming to his mind for five years. It's five years. Five years. Nowadays, we have people that tell me, Rabbina Ali, the Lord told me, and this is from the devil. You know what's from the devil and from the God after one second. One verse you read and the Lord told you. The devil can appear as an angel of light. The devil can appear as an angel of light. So St. Macarius ended up wrestling with this thought for five years. That he would know the will of God and eventually he realized it was from the Lord. And he went into the wilderness. Why do I say these stories? There's stories to learn from these righteous people who teach us not to be so impulsive. Somebody comes and tells me a rumor. Let me pray about it. Let me ask before I respond and change my view towards a person. Let me ask the Lord to reveal to me if this is a trick from the devil or not. But nowadays, we're following the river of the devil. And every current that he sends us, we just jump in the water and we get... Suck down the river of the temptations of Satan. One day, when Saint Macarius, he went deep into the wilderness and he saw men who were living without clothes. They were very righteous. They never ate, praying all the time. And they told him, Macarius said, how can I be like you? He says, they said, do like we are doing. And St. Macarius says, this is too hard for me. And so they said, okay, then go back and weep for your sins. Weep for your sins. St. Macarius, who lives in the desert, who is not committing sin, who doesn't have lustful thoughts, who is not falling in, in gossip and in rumors, he's living by himself, weep for your sins. What are you going to weep about? A lot of us now, when we weep for our sins... We weep for the bad words that I said and the evil things that I saw or I, or, or I, I did. But back in the day, the, the sins were different. There's a verse in the Bible that says, To him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So can you imagine that the saints, when they would repent and weep over their sins, it was because they didn't feel for somebody. My, my friend was mourning and I didn't care for them. My brother was in need and I didn't give them. These are the sins that the righteous would weep over. I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the righteous. When are we going to reach the point where the goal in our life is to be like Christ? Not to not do bad things. Not to not sin. Not to not say rumors. That is not the goal. I stopped 
saying rumors, and I stopped gossiping. That is not the goal. The goal is to become like Christ. To become like Christ. When we're going to struggle and say, all my thoughts, my heart, my words, my social time, where I sit, how I speak to my loved ones, how I speak to people on the street. Listen to this story. Saint Macarius was walking with his disciple in the desert. And he told his disciple, go ahead of me. And when he went, his disciple, the monk, saw a pagan priest, Kehen Wesani, and he began to rebuke him and says, oh devilish one, where are you going? So this wicked priest held the monk and beat him almost to death. And then he began to come and he saw St. Macarius. And St. Macarius said, Salvation be to you, O tired one. This is to the pagan priest who just killed his disciple, or almost killed his disciple. He says, Salvation be to you, O tired one. And he said, Why did you say that to me? Why are you saying such... He says, Because I saw that you were weary in vain. You're troubling yourself in vain. And he says, Do you see something good in me? He says, Of course. And this pagan priest who was worshipping the devil converted and became a monk and converted many other pagans. And what did St. Macarius said? He said this beautiful saying and I'm going to end with this. A bad word makes even good people bad. But a good word turns bad people into good. A good word to a bad person turns bad people into what? into good we find good people and we give them bad words and we make good people become bad people they get angry and they fight and they curse why because somebody told me a bad word the word of encouragement the word of love the kind word even to somebody that you think may not deserve it give them a good word what is it going to cost you does a good word cost anything it costs nothing when can we when we see non-believers at home, Egypt, or in the street, or at work, we think we only want to curse them. Imagine if we told them good words, they say, what do you see good in me? And I say, you say, I see the image of God in you. Do you believe that your good words can build? Do you see how the devil can destroy multitudes? Because we can't say, an encouraging word to somebody who doesn't deserve it. I pray that we would learn from the lives of the saints these wonderful lessons of denying yourself, not seeking your own honor, but fleeing from honor that you might be saved. And glory be to God forever.